Hi everybody, my name is Tom Colvin, I'm a first year fellow, and this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a three minutes, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how my AAAS fellowship transformed my worldview. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to start though, you need to know my model for how science changes the world. Most problems lend themselves to scientific inquiry or optimization, and if we could just harness the science or build the tech, ah, the people are going to love it. Uh, so obviously the science is the most important part, it's 75% of the work to be done, and then the rest, maybe 15%, is getting people to go along with it with a little bit of luck. Now, my background, I have a BS in physics and I have a PhD in aerospace engineering, so I'm rock solid on that 75% science piece. But I gotta admit, I don't know a ton about the 15% social element. So, that's important if I want to use science to change the world, and so I took a fellowship at USAID to learn about the social issues around delivering science to the people. Uh, so this might sounds a little crazy. My ultimate goal is actually to help humans colonize the solar system. And I don't just want a few privileged astronauts up there. I want you, I want everybody to get a chance to go to space. But the question arises, how do you bring the benefits of cutting edge science and tech to benefit regular people? Um, so that's actually what my office at USAID works on. We fund scientists in developing countries whose research has the potential to affect a policy change in their home country. And we encourage our scientists to forge relationships with decision makers and to deliver their evidence to their local governments, to bring the benefits of science to the people. So, but when I talk to our researchers, I run into some issues, like they don't know how to take their results outside of the lab. They say, well, I'm just a scientist. Or some people try to, but they find out, oh, it's illegal to share the data that they gathered. Or the government didn't like the results in their report, so they buried it. Or, hey, family, the well you're drinking from is toxic, but that family won't go down the street to get clean water, because that's used by people from a lower social class. So how do these issues that my experiences fit in with my model? It seems like the science and tech here is actually really pretty easy and it's social institutions that are standing in the way. And on the flip side, you notice governments just tend to plow ahead with ideas without ever consulting the science. So it seems like social institutions are always either ahead of or stopping the scientific progress. And then simultaneously, I notice I have a tendency to solve most of the world's problems by using the word just. Gerrymandering, just use an algorithm. Fossil fuels, just use renewables. Disease, do, just vaccinate your kids. Healthcare, just, okay, actually healthcare is incredibly complicated. <laughs> so, but the point is I have a habit of consistently undervaluing the human element in the problem solving process. I think because I can see the technical answers so clearly. So I've had to flip the science and the social part of my model to more accurately reflect what I think I'm seeing in the real world. Science is the relatively easy part, and if I care about helping people with science, I have to spend a lot more time focusing on the 70%, 75% social institutions. And so to be perfectly honest, I kind of suspected this before I started the fellowship, but I sure didn't want to believe it. And I didn't internalize it until I saw it happening across all academic disciplines all around the globe. So I'll admit, I don't know what the best way uh, forward is, but I think it involves starting to read history books and doing another year as a AAAS fellow. Thank you. <laughs>